Hi everyone, my name is Mateusz Fejher and I'm a software engineer at Scythe Studio. Today I'm gonna talk about porting from Qt 5 to Qt 6. I will walk you through why is it worth upgrading and how you can do it without questioning all your life choices. I will also be covering insights from my blog post on this topic, so if you want more details about it, just click in the link in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's take a look what Qt6 introduced compared to the Qt5. Qt Quick has seen some big improvements, focusing on performance, flexibility and easy of use. In Qt5, the scene graph relied mainly on OpenGL, but in Qt6, we got the rendering hardware interface, supporting Vulkan, Metal, Direct3D and OpenGL. This not only boosts compatibility, but also improves rendering performance especially in Qt Quick 3D, making complex scenes smoother and more efficient. Shader support has also leveled up. Qt 6 now supports modern shading languages. It improves also compiling shaders at runtime for better hardware performance. Plus, Qt Shader tools makes managing and debugging shaders much easier. So, whenever you're working with 3D graphics or custom effects, Qt 6 gives you more power and better performance than ever. At this point you might be thinking, ok Mateusz, but isn't RHI a pretty big deal? Tell us more about it. And I say, I got you. As Qt documentation says, the Qt rendering hardware interface is an abstraction for hardware accelerated graphics APIs, such as OpenGL, Direct3D, Metal and Vulkan. Each instance is bugged by a backend for a specific graphics API. The selection of the backend is a runtime choice and is up to the application or library that creates the instance. And why did they implement something like this? Again, straight from the docs. Some backends are available on multiple platforms like OpenGL, Vulkan. While APIs specific to a given platform are only available when running on the platform in question Metal on macOS, Direct3D on Windows. In simple terms, this means Qt6 gives you the flexibility to choose the best graphics backend for your platform. No more being locked into just OpenGL, whatever is Vulkan, Metal or Direct3D, Qt will adapt to maximize performance and compatibility. Pretty awesome, right? Absolutely. I think now is a good time to move on and explore some other new features in Qt6. As Qt continues to evolve, Qt6.8 introduced new modules and features while also removing outdated or less used features to keep the framework lean and modern. Here's a quick look at some of the key changes. Qt removed features like Qt Script, Qt Gamepad and Qt Quick WebGL, which are either outdated or no longer in high demand. But Qt 6.8 brings improvements like Qt Quick 3D, Qt Shader Tools and Qt HTTP Server, making the framework more powerful and flexible than ever. Of course, if you want to see the full list of changes, you can check out the link in the description below. CMake API has also evolved in Qt 6, bringing some new improvements. No more Qt 5 core or Qt 6 core, just use Qt Core making your CMake code cleaner. Qt6 also adds new CMake functions, like Qt add QML module, which simplifies QML module integration and reducing unnecessary code and setup. Qt adds resources, automates resources handling, reducing manual work and errors. These updates make development smoother and ensure better compatibility across Qt versions. For full details, check out the CMake Qt5 and Qt6 compatibility page, link in the description below. If you know any other changes that's worth mentioning, the comment section is yours. Now that we understand the key changes in Qt6 compared to Qt5, we can sum it up with three main reasons why porting to Qt6 is worth it. Staying up to date, better performance and opportunity to refactor your code. Upgrading to the latest Qt version is the best way to stay ahead in modern application development. New features, improvements and security updates are exclusive to the latest release, meaning your project will always have the best performance and latest innovations. Simply put, upgrading keeps your application competitive. 
efficient and future-proof. Qt6 brings major performance improvements over the Qt5, making it faster and more efficient framework for modern applications. Unlike Qt5, which relied heavily on OpenGL, one of the biggest upgrades in Qt6 is QRHI, a new abstraction layer that lets Qt6 choose the best graphics API for each platform. Qt Quick 3D offers a unified 2D 3D rendering system, improved shaders and better material handling, making it far more powerful than before. Let's not forget about Qt Multimedia, which has been completely updated for better cross-platform support, lower latency and improved audio-video streaming performance. Porting from Qt5 to Qt6 isn't just about upgrading, it's also a great opportunity to refactor your codebase and reduce technical debt. Over time, projects accumulate outdated code, inefficient structures and deprecated libraries. Migrating to Qt6 forces you to revisit and clean up your code, making it more efficient, maintainable and future-proof. By refactoring during the transition, you will eliminate redundant code, streamline performance and adopt modern best practices. This not only improves stability, but also makes adding new features easier in the long run. Beyond just upgrading to Qt6 new features, this is your chance to build a cleaner, stronger and more future-ready application. From here, I want to engage you to leave a like, share this video with your colleagues and subscribe the channel. Thank you for all of your support. Now that we've covered the benefits of porting to Qt6, let's move on to step-by-step -step process of migrating a Qt application from Qt5 to Qt6. First, prepare your code base. Before starting the porting process, make sure your application is updated to the latest Qt5.15 version. And please don't exit the video, just hear me out. This method minimizes the changes needed when moving to Qt6 for those reasons. Qt5.15 is the best starting point for transition to Qt6. It has the fewest deprecated APIs, making the migration process much smoother. By fixing these warnings now, you can avoid most breaking changes before even starting the actual porting process. Since Qt5.15 includes the latest features, bug fixes and optimizations from the Qt5 series, upgrading to it first helps ensure your project is stable and up to date, reducing the risk of unexpected issues. Plus, many APIs in Qt5.15 were designed to be forward compatible with Qt6 making your transition even easier. Second step to update your codebase is to remove or replace any usage of APIs that exist but were marked as deprecated in Qt5. This will simplify the moving process since these APIs may have been removed in Qt6. The second step for the porting process is set up your development environment. Well, obviously just install the Qt6 on your machine. If your project uses QMake, convert the QMake project file or files to CMake. This involves creating CMake list files and configuring them to find and use Qt6 modules. Change your include paths from Qt5 to Qt6 modules. For example, replace include Qt5 module with include Qt6 module. Run CLazy checks. Set all the CLazy checks dedicated to Qt6 porting and run those on your project. Then identify and replace any Qt5 APIs that have been removed in Qt6 with their name equivalents. Some modules have been restructured or renamed in Qt6. Update your code to use the new module structures. You can also use the Qt5 Compact library, which is a module that contains the Qt5 core APIs that were removed in Qt6. If your application relies on OpenGL, you may need to adapt it to use the QRHI, which supports multiple graphics APIs. If your application uses custom shaders, update them to be compatible with the new unified shaders pipeline in Qt6. Use profiling tools in Qt Creator to identify and optimize performance bottlenecks in your application. Check for memory leaks and optimize memory usage with the improved memory management features in Qt6. And the last, ensure that your project documentation is updated to reflect the changes made during the porting process. Update your CI-CD pipelines to use Qt6 
ensuring that builds and tests are performed in the new environment. By following these steps, you can successfully port your Qt 5 application to Qt 6, taking advantage of the latest features and performance improvements. If you would like us to create a real-time coding video showing the porting process in action, let us know in the comments. You may ask, what if I have project based on Yocto? Well, we are not stranger to the Yocto project. We have a blog post where we teach what the Yocto project is and how to build a Linux distribution on your own. With that knowledge, we can tell that porting Yocto based application from Qt5 to Qt6 is not that different from porting a regular application. Here are some additional steps to consider porting your application in Yocto. First, switch from MetaQt5 layer to MetaQt6 to support Qt6. Ensure all required libraries for Qt6 are included in your Yocto build. Test the application on the new build to ensure compatibility and performance. These steps will help ensure a smooth transition to Qt6 in a Yocto-based environment. So, as you can see, porting from Qt5 to Qt6 comes with a lot of benefits. Better performance, new features, and more future-proof codebase. While the process might seem daunting at first, with the right approach, it can be a great opportunity to improve your project. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, check out my blog post on porting from Qt5 to Qt6. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, have a great day and do zobaczenia!